صدق اللہ اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الحمد للہ الذي جعلنا من المتمسکین بولایت یمیر المؤمنین ولائمت المعصومین علیہم السلام والحمد للہ الذي هدانا لہذا وما کنا لنہتدی لولان هدان اللہ ثم الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین شفیع المذنبین حبیب الہ العالمین ابی القاسم مصطفی محمد اللہم صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد و علی علی بیتہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین و لعنت اللہ علی عدائہم اجمعین من یوم عداوتہم الى یوم الدین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ عز و جل فی کتابه الحکیم و هو استق القائلین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا لا تتخذوا عدوی و عدوکم اولیاء تلقون الیہم بالمودہ وقد کفروا بما جاءکم من الحق آمنا باللہ صدق اللہ العلی العظیم اللہ ما صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد السلام علیکم جمیعا و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ I begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There is no doubt that is due to his kindness and generosity That he provides for us opportunities such as these where we gather together in remembrance of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. You all sound very flat. Yeah, I hope everything is okay, inshallah. Um, we have been discussing, you know, if you're flat, then I become flat. Yeah, and if I become flat, then I, all of you will fall asleep. So let's lift each other up with a loud salawat, inshallah. Allahumma <laughs> salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We've been discussing, inshallah, what we're planning. Yeah, to give to let you give you a heads up is have a salawat meter, okay, and it will show you how how loud our salawat is and what's the acceptable standard. Inshallah, we're trying to put that up, um, and I think that will be a good idea and a good motivation for us to make sure that we're never on the low end of the meter scale. I think I don't see why the management uh, would not have uh, would not agree to that. Inshallah, um, <coughs> for the last uh, um, two lectures. We have been discussing about um, tawalla and tabarra. Um, as we know that tawalla means to love those who God loves and to love those things that God loves. Tabarra means to hate those people that God hates um, and to be free of them and to be free and have animosity or hatred towards those things that God does not like or God hates himself. Over the past two lectures, we've given a very deep introductory discussion where we have laid the, the groundwork of explaining in detail what tawalla and what tabarra are. Um, we have established how this concept was brought about by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, for those interested, Suratul Mumtahana describes the entire beginning um, of this concept of tawalla and tabarra. And then we also discussed why tawalla and tabarra um, are the foundation from which everything else is built upon in Islam. Um, and the reason, the main reason why we gave is because tawalla and tabarra are the ultimate acts of submission to God. And um, if you're interested how that is, you can visit the previous lecture. Um, and then in the last lecture as well, we discussed um, what are the gifts reserved for those who practice tawalla and tabarra in their lives. Today, inshallah, today in the next lecture, um, which will be um, not this Thursday, but the wafat of our second Imam, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We will discuss the practical applicability of tawalla and tabarra in our lives. How do I practically apply this concept of tawalla and how do I practically apply this concept of tabarra? That, that one tabarra will be the next lecture inshallah. But today we'll be looking at how to practically apply this concept of tawalla into our lives. 
before we answer that question or describe the practicality of that, there's a very important question that needs answering. And that question is, why is it that Tawalla and Tabarra are not part of our Usul al-Deen, rather they are part of our Furu al-Deen? Yeah? Usul al-Deen, as you know, are the roots of our religion, the Usul, um, our fundamental beliefs, Tawheed, Adalat, Nabuwat, Imamat, Ma'ad. These are our Usul. Um, why are Tawalla and Tabarra not part of these usul? Rather, they are part of the furu. The furu aspect are those acts like salah, siyam, hajj, zakat. Tawalla and Tabarra falls into that bracket. The way we've been describing Tawalla and Tabarra, it is almost like what we are saying. It is a belief that we have, isn't it? Who to love. It is a feeling that I have of who I should love and who I should have animosity towards. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, the way he wants Tawalla and Tabarra practiced is that it is not simply belief that I have. Rather, Tawalla and Tabarra have to be in a form of action. Okay? And this is why Tawalla and Tabarra are not part of our Usul. Usul are primarily beliefs. The beliefs are manifested into actions into our Furu. Okay? So Tawalla and Tabarra are actually manifest, are manifested through actions which are consistent and congruent to our belief structure. Yeah? I'm going to repeat this line. This is a very, very important line. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This is a very important line. Okay? Um, and this is where we will be building or continuing our discussion from. The reason why <coughs> Tawalla and Tabarra are not part of Usul, because Tawalla and Tabarra are not just beliefs that I carry with me. Tawalla and Tabarra are manifested through actions which are consistent to the beliefs that I have. Okay? This is a very important point, because anybody can cry for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Anybody can. Anybody who has a heart can listen to the story of Imam al Hussein and will cry. Yeah? This is why when we have processions in our countries, it wasn't just Shias who were part of those processions. There were Sunnis who were part of that procession, Hindus who were part of that procession. Why? Because the story of Imam al Hussein salam, is universal. Now, does that mean that they were doing tawalla? No. Anybody can beat their chest for Imam al Hussein. Anybody can say, Labbaik ya Hussein. But Tawalla is manifested when my actions are consistent with the actions of Imam al Hussein. Okay? If my actions in my life oppose what Imam al Hussein stood for, that means I have not practiced Tawalla in my life, no matter how much I cry for him. Yeah? And this applies in every facet of life. So for example, um, standing up for justice will be one example. Making sure I say my salah on time is another example. Hijab is another example for both men and women. If I weep for the hijab of Zainab salam, and then I practically don't wear hijab, whether I am a man or a woman, then I have not practiced tawalla for Zainab salam. I have not. I have merely shed tears for Zainab. Yeah? So Tawalla is a manifestation of actions which are consistent with my belief structure. And likewise, we may send a thousand lanat upon Yazid, for example. But if my actions are consistent with the actions of Yazid, then I have not done Tabarra just by sending lanat upon him. So Tawalla and Tabarra are actions that we need to apply into our lives. And this is why it ties in or this, this process of actions is very much um, is, is explained by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Last nothing. Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Yeah? He says, Al-Iman huwa ma'rifatu bil qalb wa ikrarun bil lisan wa amalun bil arkan. He says, faith. Iman constitutes of three um, parts. The first part is for me to have faith or Iman in my, or to have knowledge or awareness in my heart. Then it is to profess my faith with my tongue. But the third component of Iman is to act out the practical faith that I have in my heart. 
without the acting out of our iman, our faith is incomplete. Likewise, without the acting out of tawalla and tabarra, I have not practiced tawalla and tabarra. And this is also very important that as as a people who want to practice tawalla and tabarra, I am never allowed to sit on the fence. Yeah? Um, what does that mean? When there are things happening, um, there is something which is right and something which is wrong. You're never in a situation where you say, well, I'll sit out and see what happens. Yeah? Um, this, is not, this is not tawalla or tabarra. Okay? We're not allowed to do that. Things are either right or wrong. Um, and we have to figure out which side we are on. First, we have to even figure out what is right and what is wrong. And this is where um, the importance of what I've been calling the superheroes of Islam comes into play. I look at the lives of the superheroes of Islam, see where they stood, what they stood for, how they stood, and that will practically give me examples of when to stand and how to stand in the course of my life. And this is why the example, the famous example that we have um, is from the Battle of Jamal, isn't it? In the Battle of Jamal, um, people on one side saw Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, while on the other side they saw Allahumma <coughs> salli ala and wa ali Muhammad. Yeah? Um, while on the other side they saw the wife of the Prophet Aisha. They saw Talha and Zubair, famous companions of the Prophet. And now they think to themselves, well, what side should I stand on? Isn't it? It's a confusing situation. I can understand the confusion, but the confusion lies because they did not follow with the advice of the Prophet. The advice of the Prophet was very simple. He says to Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, if you see the entire world walking on one valley, and if you see Ali walking on another valley, walk with Ali. For Ali yun ma'al haq, wal haqq ma'a Ali. Our understanding of what is right and what is wrong has been defined for us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who we need to mimic, who we need to imitate has been told to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, there can never be a time where I sit on the fence. Nor can there be a time where I should be confused if I am truly imitating them. So, this is a very key component of tawalla and tabarra. Is that it is action-based and B, it is fully understood or practiced through imitation. Okay? And we'll discuss why it is practiced through imitation. In Islam, having a guide to, to lead you down the path to closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highly um, advisable. Not just highly advisable, in fact, it is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you want to reach Him, take a teacher on that journey with you. Okay? And the examples we have throughout our history, the best example that we have in the Holy Quran is the story of Prophet Khidr and Musa yeah? Musa was an Ulul Azam prophet. Yeah? He was one of the five greatest prophets there was. Yet when God wanted to teach Musa something, he said, Musa, go and find the most learned man who is alive today and let him teach you what I want you to learn. Okay? So when we have that example from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where people like Musa yeah, who are infinite times more knowledgeable than us as being the prophet of God yet God recommends to him and says Musa take a teacher yeah, and you will get closer to me. In fact when we look at the seerah we find that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad also had a teacher in his teaching. Yeah? Now this was not a man teacher, but this is beautifully described by Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In Khutbatul Qasi'ah, um, Khutbatul Qasi'ah is the sermon number 191. It's a very beautiful sermon, a very long sermon in which he describes um, shaitan. And then he describes the effect that shaitan has had on people. It's a very beautiful um, sermon. But then towards the latter half or the, uh, the ending, Imam alayhi salam describes the upbringing of the Prophet. Yeah? And we've, uh, we've quoted this hadith or we've quoted this sermon here before where Imam alayhi salam says, وَلَقَدْ قَرَنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ بِهِ مِن لَدُنْ أَنْ كَانَ فَطِيمًا أَعْذَمَ مَلَكٍ مِّن مَلَائِكَتِهِ 
يَسْلُكُ بِهِ طَرِيقَ الْمَكَارِمْ وَمَحَاسِنَ أَخْلَاقِ الْعَالَمْ لَيْلَهُ وَنَهَارَهُ He says from the time of the Prophet's weaning, yani from the time of the young age of the Prophet, Allah put a mighty angel by his side. Yeah? This is Imam describing. He says that the Prophet, that Allah sent a mighty angel on the side of the Prophet to take him along the path of high character and good behavior day and night. Yeah? Day and night, the Prophet was being taught how to have makarim al akhlaq yeah? And Imam alayhi salam says, while I used to follow the Prophet like a young camel who follows her mother. Yeah? Every day the Prophet would show me in the form of a banner of some high traits and then he used to command me to follow those high traits. Right? So when we look at these type of examples, if the Prophet was sent a guide to get closer to God, if Imam was following the guidance of the Prophet to get closer to God, then naturally we have to follow guidance to get closer to God. Yeah? We're not going to be guided sitting at home learning things on my own. I will only get so far. But the rest of the way needs to be taken by a teacher. And this has been a clear example um, given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why if we want to practice tawalla and tabarra correctly, it has to be in the form of guidance. Okay? We need to be guided by those who God recommends us to follow to get closer to Him. Tawalla and Tabarra again are going to be fully manifested when we take practical guides to learn how to do Tawalla and Tabarra. Okay? So these are two key points that we must remember before we discuss the practicality of Tawalla. Again, the first is that it has to be a process of mimicking that will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second is that it has to be action-based. Okay, it has to be action-based. Now, with regards to tawalla, how do I know who I am supposed to love? Okay, this should be the first question that we have. Tawalla is to love those who God loves. How do I know who it is that I need to love? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described this very clearly in the Holy Quran. And we'll be discussing three categories of people whom the Allah has described in the Quran who tawalla on them is wajib. Love for them is wajib. The first one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Al Ahzab, Surah number 33, verse 21. He says, Lakad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana. Yeah? He says, indeed in the Apostle of God, in the Apostle of Allah, there has certainly for you a good exemplar. Uswatun Hasana. And he says, لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For those who look forward to Allah and the last day and remember Allah greatly, indeed in them, for these people, the Prophet is the best exemplar to get you to that final destination. This is what we have been talking about this entire time. Love is manifested through what? Action, isn't it? Yeah? Love is manifested through action. The action of following the footsteps of the Prophet is a result of the love that we have for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So the first one on whom tawalla is wajib is Rasulullah. Okay? There is no doubt about that. The second example again comes from the Holy Quran. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, asked only one thing from his ummah. Qul la as'alukum alayhi ajran illal mawaddata fil qurba. The love of his family is asked by the Prophet in the Qur'an. And subhanallah. So there is no doubt that tawalla, then the second category, not even second category, the second group of people whom tawalla is wajib upon are the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. In fact, there's a very beautiful hadith from the Prophet, um, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, where he says, لا يؤمنوا abdun حتى أكون أحب إليه من نفسه he says that a servant will never get the completion of faith until I am dearer to him than his own self. 
And وَتَكُونَ عِتْرَتِي إِلَيْهِ أَعَزَّ مِنْ عِتْرَتِهِ And that my household is dearer to him than his own household. وَأَهْلِي أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ And my family is more um, closer to him and dearer to him than his own family. وَتَكُونَ ذَاتِي أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ ذَاتِهِ And my being is dearer to him than his own being. This is very huge implications. That the love, we've talked about love in detail before, that the love of God should be the primary love that we have in our hearts. And then the positions come into place by whom God um, has ordered us to love. Right? This is Tawalla and Tabarra. So God has then ordered us to love the Prophet. God has then ordered us to love the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And what this implies then is that when I am commanded by the Ahlul Bayt to do something, um, I don't have any option in that, in that, in that matter. Yeah? I don't have a right to even ask them why should I be doing this. It is a simple command of obedience that I must follow everything that they say. Right? And this is, this is the complete manifestation of tawalla. You see, the reason is very simple, isn't it? When God tells us to love them and to follow them, it must mean that everything they say and everything that they, they do must be what God wants. Otherwise, God would never ask us to follow somebody who, who may do certain things that God is not happy with. You all with me? Yeah? yeah? This is how we prove the isma of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Yeah? When God says, أَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ He says that obey God and obey the Prophet and those who are sent or vested with authority. Ta'a, obedience is a complete mutlaq statement. Yeah? He doesn't say obedience only in salah or he doesn't say obedience only in matters of religion. No, obedience in everything. That means if the Imam today comes and tells me to jump, my only question is how high do you want me to jump? Not why do you want me to jump? What will I benefit from jumping? Yeah? Will I get close? No. Be quiet and jump. Yeah? This is what is needed from me. And this is why um, the true Shia are described in this manner, isn't it? Um, this beautiful story that we get of a man who comes to see our sixth Imam alayhi salam. Right? It's a famous story. And the Imam alayhi salam, he tells the Imam, I am your Shia. The Imam says, are you? The guy says, yes. He says, go open that oven and sit in there. The man says, no, Prophet, you're Imam. Yeah? Why? Yeah? I will burn. Why do you want me to do that? Yeah? All these questions started to come about. Then another man walks in and the Imam just tells him, go sit in that oven. The man opens the oven, goes and sits inside the oven. Yeah? A long discussion happens, 30 minutes. You can imagine the state of that man, right? His eyes are at the oven the entire time. Then the Imam sees that condition and says, go and open the oven. And he opens it and he says, the man was sitting there comfortably. Yeah? This is what would happen yeah, if we were to simply follow the dictates of those whom God has made mandatory on us to do tawalla of. Yeah, that we would never be put in a situation where we would be in danger. Yeah? Even if my life was at stake, it would be for a greater cause that I would be given Jannah. Yeah? So never... By following and obeying those whom tawalla is wajib upon, would I ever be in a situation where I would be in some type of danger as far as coming to, um, danger as far as um, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forget physical danger. Yeah? Forget this physical um, realm that we're talking about. So this is that next group of people. And you know this concept that I've mentioned, where you be quiet and you accept it. Um, is there in the Quran? It is not something that I am just coming out with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Ahzab, verse 36, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Very beautiful and powerful verse. Um, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a faithful man or a faithful woman. Now again, from what we've discussed last time, the completion of faith is only through tawalla and tabarra. 
Okay? So when he talks about a faithful man and a faithful woman, he's talking about those people who are practically doing tawalla and tabarra in the course of their lives. He says that a faithful man or a faithful woman may not, when Allah and His, and His Apostle have decided on a matter, have an option on that matter. Yeah? Or in some, in some, the better translation would be, they, don't have, they should not have an opinion on that matter. Huh? That means if the Prophet tells me something, I'm not even allowed to have my own opinion. When the Imams tell me something, I'm not even allowed to have my own opinion. Do you understand what submission means? It's very, um, it's, it's, it's waters that we have not ever swam in before, right? Because we have been so distant from our Imam for so long, um, we now live in an age where we want to question everything. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But the danger of that will come when my Imam will tell me to do something, I will still be in that mentality of questioning and I will question him and I will go against what the Qur'an is saying. We may ask him for guidance, that's fine. We may ask him for an explanation, that's fine. Yeah? Our history has that. But the fact that I have an option or opinion in that matter should never cross my mind. And that training really needs to start from today. That training needs to begin from today where um, we follow and we submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without having my own opinion on that matter. Okay? Now the third group of people that I am supposed to love and tawalla is wajib upon them are fellow believing brothers and sisters. Okay? Um, you all. You guys and the believing sisters are people that whom I have to have love for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described this in the Holy Quran in Surah number 9, Surah number Tawbah, Surah Tawbah, verse 71. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضِ yeah? Believing men and believing women are guardians for one another. They are faithful to one another. They are helpful to one another. And this madda to awliya comes from the same word as wala, and this is where tawalla comes from. So in other words, believing men and believing women should love one another. Yeah? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we get three different categories of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that tawalla upon them becomes wajib. Besides that, God has mentioned over 46 times in the Qur'an things that we should be loving. Okay, So people, yeah, remember tawalla is two things, right? Love the people, love the things, both of which God love. So the people we have described whom we should love. As far as the things that we should be loving, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been abundantly clear in the Holy Qur'an. Yeah? Abundantly clear, and I'll give a few examples. And as I said, this is over 46 times God has described what He loves and what He does not love in the Quran. He says, Inna Allah la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad. Inna Allah la yuhibbul tawwa. Inna Allah yuhibbul tawwabin. Wa yuhibbul mutatahirin. Wallahu la yuhibbu kulla kaffarin athim. For in Allah, la you hebul kafirin. Wallahu la you hebul zalimin. For in Allah, you hebul mutakin. Wallahu you hebul muhsinin. Wallahu you hebul sabirin. In Allah, you hebul mutawakilin. Beautiful. Yeah? That which God wants us to love has explicitly been described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not even implicitly. How much more can you say when God says, I love this thing? That means it is clear for us that we should be doing these things, that we should be loving these things ourselves. So then, the question is now, that if I... Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. If God has clearly described in the Holy Qur'an the people whom I should love, and the things which I should love, then what is the point of um, imitating or mimicking the superheroes of Islam? You understand my question? Remember we said that tawalla and tabarra is practically applied into our lives by the form of imitation. Yeah? If it has been clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran whom I should love, 
and it has been clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran, um, things I should love, then why then is imitation so highly recommended in Islam to the form where even God says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ Uswatun Hasana. For you in the Quran, he says, for you, the best of exemplar is the Prophet. Follow him in everything he does. Yani mimic him in everything that he does. So why? Why is this imitation so important in the concept of Tawalla and Tabarra? And the answer is quite simple. God knows that I am weak. Yeah? God knows that sometimes I do not have the courage to stand up when I should be standing up. God knows that sometimes when there is oppression going on, I don't have the guts to stand up. Yeah? Therefore, God tells me, look, there have been people who have done it before you. Yeah? And look at how they did. And look at what the result of their action was. All of this to motivate me to stand up and do what is right. Yeah? This is a very beautiful point if you think about it. Practically, we see it all throughout our lives, right? I have a question answer session today. I ask you if you have any questions. Nobody wants to be the first one to stand up and ask a question. But as soon as one asks a question, the floodgates open and everybody asks me questions. Yeah? The same applies in every facet of life. All you need is one person to stand up. And when that one person stands up, it gives every other human being courage to stand up and do what is right. Yeah? You look at how in America, um, African Americans were not given any rights until 1960. Subhanallah, this was not a long time ago. Yeah? It took one man to stand up and say, this is not right. Or it started with one woman on a bus yeah? who said, I will not move to the back of the bus. That move by Rosa Parks, for example, ignited such a fuse within that country that then everybody knew that this was wrong and everybody stood up for it. Yeah? It took a man like Gandhi to say that we need our own country, for example. Yeah? It took a man like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to say that this is wrong. Imam salli ala and wa ali Muhammad. Yeah? To say that this is wrong. We cannot pay allegiance to people like Yazid. Yeah? If he had not stood up, uh, would anybody else have had the guts to stand up? But the fact that he stood up, till today we are finding confidence to stand up against oppression. Till today we are finding confidence to stand up against tyranny. Which is why mimicking and imitating is the fundamental principle in Tawalla and Tabarra. I know right and wrong. I know it, but then why don't I follow through with it? Hmm? Why don't I every time do what is right? It's because I am weak. Yeah, so we have to admit our weakness when we have weakness. Okay? It is because I have not fully understood the concept of tawalla and tabarra. And this is what we discussed in the first lecture. Yeah? The reason why I cannot do um, that which I know to be right every time yeah? is because I have not fully understood the concept of Tawalla and Tabarra. And once I have understood and followed these concepts of Tawalla and Tabarra, I will never do that which is wrong, and I will always stand up for what is right. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So this is, in a nutshell, what Tawalla is. Okay? Tawalla is the manifestation um, is manifested through actions which are consistent with my beliefs and the courage to act out that which I have in my beliefs is only done through the understanding or the process of imitation. Yeah? I can do it otherwise. I'm not saying it has to, but God has recommended this path for us. When God recommends a path for us, then I don't have an opinion in this matter, isn't it? Yeah? As we just discussed that verse, the mu'min and the mu'mina don't have opinions in matters when God has described or prescribed something for us. Beautiful how it all connects. Yeah? So here, this is what tawalla is. And the reason why, another reason why I imitate them is because A, they have been chosen by God. And because they have been chosen by God, they will never do that which God displeased, is displeased with. So I can follow them in every facet of life every facet of life, I follow the Prophet. 
I follow the Imma alayhi salam. I follow the believing men and believing women. Doesn't this have to be the believing men and women of today? Since the creation of man, Adam was the first believing man. Until now, I should love every believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? I should love every women, woman believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in them I will find courage to do that which is right and that which is wrong. If this tawalla is understood, um, tawalla just like amr bil ma'roof is very easy to do. Or easier, not to say very easy, it's easier to do. Yeah? Tabarra is where difficulty arises. Just like nahi anil munkar. Nahi anil munkar is difficult. Um, the same way tabarra is difficult. Um, because we don't like to hate things. Yeah? Um, and then if we are to hate things, we don't know the correct way of hating something. Um, and sometimes our hatred comes out in violent manners. Yeah? And this is not tabarra in any um, way or form. Inshallah, um, and the, and uh, as we said, next Monday, I believe it will be Monday night, uh, we will be discussing tabarra in quite a bit of detail. Yeah? Um, and we'll be answering three um, questions. Um, we'll be answering, am I supposed to hate everybody who's a non-mu'min? Yeah? How then should my hate for them um, be manifested? Um, and the third question that we will be answering is, um, I don't remember. Yeah? But inshallah, we have three important questions um, that we will be answering, um, which are always... Um, asked about Tabarra. Yeah? Um, in this present situation, are there certain people on whom Tabarra um, was wajib which should not be done today? Yeah? Because of the situation that we live in today. So these are the three questions that we'll be asking. Um, and inshallah, um, by listening to that lecture, we'll have a complete understanding of the concept of Tawalla and Tabarra. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Tonight we are marking the 20th anniversary, 20th um, day anniversary um, since the tragedy of Karbala, since Ashura, um, the massacre of Karbala. And it is the date which is reported that the family of the Ahlul Bayt uh, reached the gates of Sham, the 20th um, since the passing. Um, since the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. We can imagine um, that this was no doubt not an easy journey. Um, they went um, chained um, as prisoners um, right after the death of 18 of their closest family members. Um, they were taken as prisoners from Karbala to Kufa. In Kufa, they were made um, and stood um, made and paraded in front of the people as if they were war criminals. Um, it is in this land of Kufa that we know that Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam was taunted by Ibn Ziyad. Yeah? Um, the family of the Prophet was taunted by Ibn Ziyad to that extent where Ibn Ziyad had the audacity to ask Zainab alayhi salam, Kayfa wajadti sunullah? Um, she asked, he asked Zainab, how did you find the workings of God? As if it was God's hand who had killed Imam al Hussein. To which Zainab gives one of the most beautiful replies where she says, Ma wajadtu illa jamila. Yeah? I did not find anything but beauty in the workings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Kufa then they were taken to Sham. If we look at the distance, this was no short distance. In the hot sands of Sham, in the hot sands of the desert, they were paraded. Our fifth Imam alayhi salam says that my father was asked by a companion, how was the journey to Damascus, ya ibn Rasulillah? To which the Imam alayhi salam replied, they rode us on camels which were unsaddled. And they put the ladies on mules which were unsaddled. And my father's head was on a spear on the entire journey. And there were men holding sticks. Every time we would cry for our father, they would hit us with these sticks. He said, this was the way we continued the entire journey till we reached the gates of Shah. 
Ah, once they reached Sham, the difficulty was just continuing. It is said that when the family reached the gates of Sham, Awqafu ahlul bayti ala baab sham Thalathata ayyamin hatta yuzayyinul balad he says that they were made to stand outside the gates of Sham for three days under the hot sun while they decorated the city in praise of a victory. Ah, once they entered the, day, the gates of Sham, it is reported that the first head that entered the gates of Sham was the head of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. And as the family continued down this lane, the last head to enter was the head of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Abu Mikhnaf reports in Ajuzan Kamat Ila Rasil Hussein Biadiha Hajarun Daru Darabat Bihi Wajil Hussein. He says there was a lady who was standing by the gate of Sham, and as the head of Hussein walked by, she began to take rocks and throw it at the head of Hussein. Umme Kulthum looks towards the head of Abbas and says, Oh, my brother Abbas. I wonder if she said, oh my brother Abbas, look at what they are doing to Abba Abdullah. Look at how they are treating the head of Abba Abdullah. A man by the name, a man by the name of Sahal bin Sa'ad al Sa'di, who came from Medina, was unaware of what had happened. This was the land in which this family was living in, in peace. He came to the gates of Sham and saw that there was an entire family being paraded, entire hostages being taken. He comes to a young girl and he sees this young girl and he says, Tell me, what is your name? She said, Ana Sukaina to be. Hussein. She says, I am Sukaina, the daughter of Hussein. Ah, uh, I wonder if Sahal asked, which Hussein is this? It cannot be the grandson of the Prophet Hussein. Sahal asks her, oh daughter of Hussein, is there anything that you can do? Is there anything that I can do for you? Sukaina replies, Ya Sahal, Kulli sahib hadar ras, an yuqaddimu ras amamana, hatta yashtaghilu nasu ilay, wa la yanduru ila harami rasulillah. He says, Sahal, if you are asking to do something, then do us one favor. He he says, Oh daughter of Hussein, anything that you want. Sukaina so says, Sahal, tell that man who is holding the spear with my father's head on it to move it in front of the kafila so that the people look at the head of Hussein and do not look at the faces of the daughter of the Prophet. Ah, Sahal, it says, went to that man and paid him an amount, and the head of Hussein moved from the back to the front. And at this time, Sahal comes to Imam al Sajjad. He says, Oh, Yabna Rasulillah, tell me, is there anything that I can do for you? Imam al Sajjad says, Oh, Sahal, there is nothing you can do. But Sahal kept insisting. At this time, Imam Sajjad says, Sahal, do you have a piece of cloth that you can spare? Do you have a piece of cloth that you can spare me? If the man looks at Imam Sajjad, he hands him over a piece of cloth and says, Ya Rasulillah, what do you need a piece of cloth for? Imam moves a bracelet around his neck and says, Sahal, these bracelets are poking my skin. And he pokes it and he puts the piece of cloth between that bracelet of chains and that. Ah, and then the tragedy continues when they reach the Darbar of Sham. It is said that when they reach the Darbar of Sham, Yazid placed the head of Imam al Hussein next to him on a platter. And then to taunt the family, Yazid asked for his cane. Yazid was given his cane. The Mal'oon began to play with the lips of Rasul. 
the son of Rasulullah. Zainab nodded with sout in Hazin. Ya Hussein, Ya Habib Allah, Ya Habib Rasulullah, Ya Ibn Fatima Zahra, Ya Ibn Bint Al Mustafa. Is that everybody who heard the cries of Zainab began to cry alongside with her? فَإِذَا يَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا أَيَمُونَ قَلْبِي أَنْقَلِبُونَ وَلَاقِبَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ مَعَتَمِ حُسَيْنٍ